Hey Stitch Cuties, I'm Brittany with Stitches of Love Quilting and today in this video we are going to make this adorable block, the Garden Tools block of your Garden Moments block of the month and this is your second block that you're making as part of this block of the month membership. It's so cute, it's got a little shovel and a little rake and of course a little bumblebee flying around the flowers in the garden. So in this tutorial I'm going to give you tips on how to use your pre-fuse laser cut applique pieces, how to build the units, and then I'll review some of the stitch tips that you can use as you make your favorite applique stitch on your sewing machine. So let's get started. We are going to first when you get your kit you have all of your pieces right. I'm going to show you some tricks because if you look at this there are a bunch of flowers. Now one good thing, they're all the exact same flower. However, they're turned different directions to give some variety to the project. So I'm gonna show you some tricks on making the placement of these as easy as possible. So when you have your pieces, they come like this. They're all laser cut for you. Just a little bitty little snip that you have to do on each one. But before you do that on this block, I'm going to show you a trick on numbering your applique pieces. So first I'm going to take my flowers and then you have two pieces of paper that are your reversed applique pieces. So I have the pink flowers. What you're going to do is turn this where you have the right flower in the right place. And oh my gosh, I got it the first time. That's crazy. So you're just going to make sure you have this facing the right direction of how this is laid out because again, the flowers are all the same but turn different directions. And what we're going to do, now that I know that I have this the right direction, I'm going to write the number of the piece and I'm going to draw an arrow going up. The way I situated these on your paper and the way it's situated for you, the way it's laser cut is the exact same and they're all facing up. Now when we go to build our applique units, this is going to make your life so easy. So we're just going to go through and do that on each piece. Such a great trick. And then I'll show you how we'll number the rest of our pieces. You can see I'm doing some sloppy handwriting, but I can read it. That's all that matters. 44, 48, and then the last line. And there we go. Let's draw our arrows. There we go. Now we're going to set these aside. They're already numbered. Let's go to our next piece. This is our um, charcoal piece and just flip it over and again, laid out in the perfect direction and write your numbers. You don't need to put arrows on these because they're pretty self-explanatory how they go. Now we'll flip over to this other page. We have our garden tools pieces here. We're gonna line this up the same way it's laid on the paper. And so we have one, 52, 35, 19, and 39. And then with our leaves, the leaves and the flowers would be the two I say are the most important. And we're gonna situate it the same way. You can see there's less leaves on the bottom row. And we're just gonna write these numbers. So five, six, seven, 21, 22, 29, 30, 37, 38, 46, 47, 54, and 55. So you can go on and keep continuing to number all of your pieces and then what we're going to do after you number all of them you're just going to snip them free so the way it comes everything is laser cut except for just a little bitty bit so you just take your favorite pair of scissors and snip and then all of your pieces are free so i'm going to keep doing this you keep doing this in your sewing space and then in just a moment the magic of video we'll be back to organize our pieces and start building our applique units Okay, so now what I've done is laid my pieces out. I have them all numbered. And now if you look in your pattern, what we're going to do next is mark our accent lines on our leaves. And we can mark where our little bumblebee, bumblebee eyeball goes. So I'm just going to turn my light pad on a little bit, grab my micron pen, and I'm going to just take my leaves and actually, I'm not going to use my micron. I'm going to use my sew line chalk pencil because that's easier to, um, that's my friction pen. What am I grabbing, you guys? I'm grabbing my sew line chalk pencil. 
And what we're going to do is just mark our accent lines on each of our applique leaves so that when we sew these on or when we iron them on, we already have this marked and that will make our life just a little easier when we go to sew these accent lines. And it doesn't have to be very dark, just enough to guide you. And if you want, you can skip marking these lines if you feel comfortable when you're on your sewing machine and sewing that you can just freehand a little curved line on each of your leaves. So just a few more to go. You'll do that on all of them. So pretend you have all your accent lines marked. Now what we're gonna do is start building piles of our applique unit. So first we're gonna gather pieces one through 18 and we're gonna make a pile. So I can move my placement guide out for right now and I can turn my light pad off. There we go. So I'm just gonna grab them in numerical order. So one, and we're going all the way through 18. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then down here to my little circle is nine, 10, 11. And I'm showing you this because to me, it's a great tip on how to organize your applique pieces as you prepare to build your applique units. I don't always show this part of the process, but I think it makes it easier for you to see that. I think a little bit of prep work makes your life easy. So now that's my pile of one through 18. And what I'm gonna do is just set it aside. I flip it over now, they're all right side up. And I just start at the top of my pile when I'm building my applique units. It's gonna make my life really easy in a minute. And you'll see. Our second unit we're gonna build is pieces 19 through 28. So 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and where's 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. So this is my second applique little pile. Set that up there. Next up, our third applique unit is gonna be 29 through 34. So 29, 30, 31, 32. Oh, look, I'm making my pile backwards. <laughs> 31, 32, 33, and 34. So just a little flower unit right here. And now if we go to the next page in our pattern, we'll see the applique unit for is 35 through 51. All right, so 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. And this to me makes it especially easy when you have this many pieces. So like on our other blocks, for some of the blocks in this block of the month, you don't necessarily need to do that. But this one's a doozy. It's got, I think, 63 um, pieces, so quite a bit. All right, so we're at 45, 46, 47, and then 48, 49, 50, and 51. So this is our fourth little applique unit pile. And now applique unit five is 52 through 63. So 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61. So easy, right? This is very simple, but it does make your life easier. And that's what this is all about. Making your life easy, having fun, enjoying making something pretty. So now we're gonna actually build these units. So I have my light pad and what I'm now gonna add to my perfect stack I'm gonna put my glass mat in place right over the visible part of my light pad. And then I'm gonna get out my fusing mat. And now I'm gonna take my, turn my light pad on, take your placement guide, and we're gonna put it underneath our fusing mat. And now we're gonna start building our units. And what's great about this glass mat, if you don't have one, it protects your light pad so that you can actually iron and build your unit over your light pad. Pretty awesome. Okay, so again, back to our previous page where we have our numbers. So we're building applique unit one through 18 is applique unit one. And so we're just gonna start putting our pieces 
in place. So number one, and I'm going to pull it down just a little where I see it. There we go. And you'll notice that your fusing mat is a little bit tacky to touch. That's very helpful because you don't have to iron every piece until you start having overlap. You don't have to worry about it moving. And so number two, number three. So we're just building our unit. And then what we'll do after we have all five units is we'll assemble them together onto our fabric. And this really makes your life easy. And then if you're going to have a boo-boo, you're gonna make your boo-boo here where it's fixable. And these pieces just come right up to each other. They don't overlap. What actually ends up overlapping is the stem and the leaves over them. So we just make sure that you get that in place. And now I am gonna give these a little bit of a press and I did not turn my iron on. Oh no, let me plug that in. That makes it hard to press, doesn't it, when you have a cold iron? All right, we'll put a few more pieces down while this starts warming up. So yes, everyone, turn your iron on. <laughs> it makes your life easier to have an iron. And remember, you have your accent line drawn already. So when we go to sew this, I have that. It's probably hard for you all to see, but I have a very faint line with my sew line chalk pencil of my accent line so when I am on my sewing machine it'll be very easy to press that or to sew that. All right let's see if my iron's getting hot yet. Yes this little guy heats up so fast. Thank you steam fast travel iron. <laughs> okay so giving that a press to connect them all and now I can keep on building my unit. So put on our last little leaf over here. So this is piece number seven. So you're just going through and putting them in numerical order. So the way the numerical order is, is it goes from the bottom layer to the top layer. So you always are building up. Now we move over here to our flowers. Get my little pile closer. And we're gonna build these little bits of flowers and then we're also going to put our bumblebee together. Now remember those arrows we made? And y'all were like, why am I drawing my arrows? Well, now is where they're gonna come in so handy. So we know this is where piece number eight goes. We have the arrow facing up. I'm just gonna flip it directly over and give that a pinch to release the fusible paper and keep it facing that direction. And look, it's going to go right in place. And what that arrow did is it stopped you from having to like turn the flower so you figured out exactly where it went. So yes, wonderful tip. This is something that Julie taught me years ago. And at first when she taught me, I was like, mm, it's not that hard to figure out where the flower goes. But honestly, make your life easy. Draw the arrow, right? And then you never have to think about it. And then number 10. So number 10 is a little connecting piece here, right? So it's connecting all of these into a unit. And then a little flower center here. And number 12, arrow up, flip it over. To me, this makes life easy and I like for things to be easy. There we go. And then we'll put our flower center on and we're gonna give this a press and then we'll build our bumblebee. There we go. And you don't have to press a super long time, just enough for them to adhere together. You don't want to press too long. Oops, I dropped my little bumblebee. Ah, he wants to fly away. So if you do, you can actually overexpose the sticky part, the fusible part of your heat and bond light. I personally have never had it happen, but I know it can happen. So you just want to just give it heat for a few seconds and it sticks. So now that's 14 and 15. Now 16 is our little bumblebee body. The little yellow. There we go. Oh, I think he goes this way. There we go. And now I'm going to press these guys together and then we'll put on his stripes. And then that will have been our first applique unit. So after I put these on, what we'll do with the magic camera, I'll speed through building the rest of the units because you're going to do it all exactly the same. You just follow the number. Very easy. There's nothing. Nothing hard about it. I really love building.
the applique units. This is actually one of my favorite parts of the whole thing. So let's give this a press right here. And then with the magical camera, we'll speed through building the rest of our units. Now you have all five of your applique units built. They're so cute. Look, they're just like hanging out. You have all five of them. And so now it's time to start putting those five applique units onto our background fabric. So let's continue. So I have now taken away my fusing mat for my pile. So I have my light pad, my glass mat, still have my placement guide. And now I've taken my fabric from my box and you can see you have way more than you need you're just going to put it where it's covering that outer trim line which is the 18 and a half or yeah 15 and a half by seven and a half so i have fabric more than enough covering that and we're going to start putting our units in place so you're simply going to pick up applique unit number one and just lay it right in place there we go, looking good. Now I'm gonna pick up applique unit number two. And look at this, a perfect fit. Oh, let me get it right in place, perfect. There we go, and what we're gonna do is press this onto our fabric. So right now I'm just gonna do a kind of quick press, and then before I sew, I'll actually Put it back onto my steady bedding where you can walk over to your actual ironing board and do like a really good press but this is just to hold it in place and now we have our third applique unit it kind of floats right here by itself there we go now if you want you can get a little piece of tape and tape your um background fabric to your placement guide just to keep it in place or just be really careful not to knock it out of place. So now I have applique unit number four. See how much easier this is because I'm picking up, I'm, I'm ironing five pieces onto my fabric instead of trying to iron 63 pieces and keep it in place on my fabric, right? So let's put our little break right in place. And then the connecting piece is our flowers. This looks perfecto. And so again, just press. Now there's two ways that you can continue here. You can put stabilizer under your fabric, sew your favorite applique stitch. Ours is the buttonhole stitch. And then at the end, once you have all of your blocks assembled at the end of the program, you will then quilt your quilt on a long arm or on your sewing machine, what have you. Or you can follow the quilt as you go instructions. So it's going to stop right here on number 12. It's gonna tell you to continue to step 13 if you're gonna quilt your quilt after assembly, or if you wanna do the quilt as you go, you're gonna to jump to step 17. If you're doing the quilt as you go method, what you're gonna to wanna to do, if you wanna do the same quilting that we did, you can take your sew line chalk pencil and you can trace the meander quilting onto your background fabric, and then you can actually use your sewing machine to quilt it because you 
apply fusible batting underneath your block that's the perfect size of 15 by seven. This is all written in your pattern. So that's if you wanna do the quilt as you go. If you wanna just assemble it like kind of the normal traditional way, you are now ready to stitch. But if you're doing the quilt as you go, you would want to trace your quilting lines if desired, and you want to apply your fusible. Okay, so that's where you are now. So you have everything ironed on perfectly. So now let's talk about some stitch tips. Let me get my piece over here. So this is one that's all the way stitched. I actually stitched this one on the embroidery machine, but I made the embroidery machine match exactly how Julie stitched it on her sewing machine. So I can use this as a sample to talk about the stitching. So of course you have in your pattern a guide. Let me get to it on this back page that tells you your stitch order. So when you're stitching, you're always gonna start with the lowest piece and go up. However, once you have a thread on your machine, you might as well stitch all of that color. So that's our exception to the rule. So you're gonna start with the medium tawny tan, then you'll move on to the silver gray, which is just one piece. Then your avocado, the 1177, you're gonna stitch all over your greenery, and don't forget your accent lines. Then the sweet pink is that lighter pink that goes around the outside of all of your flowers. Your petal pink is your flower centers. Your hair in blue is that really nice light blue here. Then you have your black on your bumblebee and your rake, and your light teal goes right here on this one accent piece on your rake. So let's talk about the stitching. We kept the stitching the same size everywhere except on the bumblebee. On the yellow, you're definitely gonna take your stitch bite in if you're doing the um, buttonhole stitch. Take that down really small. And here in the center, all I did was a little straight line stitching right here just to secure that body because there was no way I was going to be able to get just one buttonhole stitch top or bottom of that bumblebee. So I did a little bitty buttonhole stitch on the front and back of his body, straight stitch in the center. On the wings, I took the stitch down nice and small as well. And then for the flowers and flower centers, leaves, the um, garden tools, all of it is the same size stitch. So on the embroidery machine, I use a two and a half by two and a half. It depends on your sewing machine. So you, you'll know from block one what stitch size that you liked using on your sewing machine. So for example, on mom's Janome, I believe she likes to use a two by two and it comes out looking the same as my embroidery machines, two and a half by two and a half. So play with your stitch size and maybe make a little note of it on your pattern so that you can remember for next month and the following months what your favorite stitch size is. Now, some tips when you're going around these flowers, you're gonna pivot a lot. So you wanna keep your machine where it has the needle down. That allows you to spin around the piece without your stitch moving, right? So definitely employ the needle down tool on your machine. And then with the straight stitches in the leaves, that's all it is, is a straight stitch out and back in. If you wanna have some fun and do some decorative stitching, you certainly can. If you want to not do um, buttonhole stitch, you can just do a straight line, about an eighth of an inch in, all the way around all of your applique pieces. You can do a zigzag stitch, the choice is yours. There's no right or wrong answer. This is your quilt to have fun with. So it's a really fun, stitch there's 63 pieces to stitch around this is definitely good practice when you're stitching around the flowers you're going to get a lot of practice with your curve stitching but again just slow your machine down keep that needle down and you'll get through it and it'll be beautiful stitching you're going to love it and it's very relaxing put on a fun book i highly recommend i've been listening to the um um, I think her name is Julia Quinn, right? The Bridgerton books. I've been listening to those on audiobooks. I'm on the fourth one, I believe. Such a fun listen. You don't have to like think too hard. Um, so it's a really fun listen while you're stitching and maybe you are thinking a little bit about what you're stitching. So I hope that this tutorial helped you. I hope that you enjoyed building the applique units and that that tip with the arrows on the flowers made it very manageable to manage 63 pieces on one block. This is block two. So next month we're going to be making block three, which is the reverse of the block one. So you already know how to do it. It's going to be nice and easy. But again, I'll have a tutorial for you next month. We can make that together. If at all you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. You can comment below in the video. You can also visit stitchesofloveclothing.com, click on support, and you can submit a support ticket. And Ariel and Kathy will be so happy to answer your questions. They are both just absolutely wonderful at getting you answered. Um, 
And if there's anything they don't know, maybe about a weird stitch tip, they always come to me or Julie and we answer your questions. So thank you so much for being a member of the Garden Moments Block of the Month. I hope you're having fun and happy stitching.